mainly this side because it's you know going to pivot up that direction. We got to get to the bottom of that side. Maybe have two more Yeah, I got This has been leaning ever since it, you know, for a hundred years, slowly leaning over. That's what I would anticipate based on what we're seeing here. That's going to go way underground. So you got to dig like way out here. It's got to be dug like, like two feet deep. Like I like to say, the thing about this kind of work is it's a lot like work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not for the pain of heart. Good, it's good. Yeah, no. They wrote so much they took about a third <laughs> underground, but <laughs> no, they cut they cut it pretty close. That's not really enough underground from the design of the stone. Because the inscription goes to here. And then the border, like you can see up to here, it's, it should have been a little deeper. Uh, but sorry. The only uh, modification to the two by fours is uh, a hole. Um, which is now quite elongated from it being used so much. Um, but originally it's about two and a quarter inches from the end. And um, it's a, uh, I drill it with a seven eighths inch spade bit. Um, this is a three quarter inch threaded rod, which is um, 12 inches long. And then I have connecting links. Um, so this is not OSHA approved. I don't give the plans for this <laughs> because we sell a lifting tripod that is. Um, I, it works really well for me, but um, um, you have to put it into a truck and move it at 48 times. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> uh, this tour had 30 events because Mississippi got canceled. So after today, I have eight more. I have eight more events in nine days, and then I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, what I've used a lot on restoration projects. More recently, when I have a lot of heavy lifting, is I'll rent a uh, small rubber track uh, excavator and take the bucket off completely and then hang, because uh, you can get anywhere, they do limited damage. And um, so that's what I used in Frankfurt actually, um, but it was very hard to get it in on this project. I reconstructed a collapsed structure there, which was a pretty epic job. The capstone was about 6,000 pounds. Um, all right, so um, we'll talk about, uh, so uh, we, we sell virtually every pr product with the exception of the two by fours. These hoists we sell. Um, this is a one ton hoist. It, it's, the, it's, a, it's a good size for most work. We have hoists from a half ton up to three ton, but by far the one that's most popular is the one ton. Um, I've been doing this work for over 20 years and the hoist I used to use then um, I, I, you know, 
took it out of commission temporarily when uh, we started to sell these. And since then I've been using this place every day for like five plus years and it works perfectly. It still works like it's new. So it doesn't look new, but it works perfectly. All right, so to set up a tripod, you have to be aware of whenever you're lifting something with a hoist, um, it's gonna go toward this hook so that we have to plan ahead. All the <clears throat> hoist is gonna do is go up and down so we can compensate, we can plan to move something as we lift it, or once it's hanging, we can push it a little. But other than that, whether it's be a manufactured lifting tripod or a homemade one, it only does two things, it goes up and down. Okay, so, um, so to set this up, it looks really symmetrical right now. This is a really se easy setup actually, because it's pretty level ground. It gets a lot more tricky when we have slopes. Uh, one angle, you'll, uh, one angle, not too bad two angles then it's then it's more so uh, tricky to work with and that's why the manufactured tripod has telescopic legs so you can extend them and put and the pin retracts it's spring loaded at different elevations so it's easy to level um, but usually we can compensate just by eye so when you set this up you look through the single leg to the two just as my angle or the opposite um, where Courtney is on the other side you look and it's like looking through a gun sight and you'll see if it's like wonky like so I'll show you like if it looks like this it's not good okay and it may topple okay so um, I don't have exact specifications on that it's just it's visual okay we can only lift with inside the lifting plane of the legs which is imperative to understand the principle and so um, this is a, this is called an endless sling it's just one big loop um, we sell all the slings also, but we don't, I don't use as many endless slings as the other slings we're going to use. The slings we sell are made by D, D, uh, DD Sling out of Wisconsin, so these are actually uh, made in America also. So usually what, so, uh, I'll just stop here. Um, that line is showing you the lifting plane of where we can lift something. So if we try to lift outside this, it'll just flip over, okay, from just basic physics. There's no way it could stand. But see, from the design, because this is my design, the lumber is bolted together, so all of our working room is forward to backward, and so we have quite a bit of run from here all the way toward that leg, but very little side to side. So you set it up planning for the front to back movement, not side to side. So in uh, lifting historic graveyards, but most of the time we can use eye to eye slings like this and do choke hitches. And so um, I'll just show you what a choke hitch is, and most people probably know, but I can demonstrate on this bucket right here. And so a choke hitch is simply, um, it goes back around and through itself. And so that's a choke hitch. Well, sliding because the bucket's slippery, but that's a choke hitch right there, okay? And so the way we're gonna use it on a gravestone is gonna be like that. And because of that, we need two slings, and so they're gonna be equal and opposite, and it's gonna also double the capacity. And believe it or not, these little thin slings in a choke hitch are actually rated to 1,900 pounds per sling. Um, that's if there's no sharp edges. And additionally, that's the way we hitch that. But when you turn it, you lose a little capacity. So probably more like 1,400 pounds. Um, so I, buy, I recommend getting slings always in pairs. And I think we're the only ones in America that sell like three foot, four foot, five foot, six foot, seven foot, eight foot. And then it jumps to 10, 12, 14. These are one inch wide. We also have two inch and other slings, but these are the ones I usually use because they just work out well. So um, what I need to lift this is a pair of slings that are one of these lengths. I'll try one of them, either five or six feet. And so the reason I have a lot of different lengths we have made is because you have limited lifting height in many situations, especially if you're using a hoist. I probably need the six footer. See, it's going to be too short to come back up. So this is the right length. And they are labeled on the side right here. And uh, this is actually a seven. Okay, so a pair of sevens would probably work out well on this. So I'll put one on and show you. Most people are over here. So it's going to go like this around and back through. Okay, and then there's it's, it's fairly close to the tight fairly tight to the top of the stone, which is what we want. So that's good. So another seven would be good. Sixes would probably work out fine also. So this might be an eight, and it is. So 
one. I just got to find the other seven, and then I'm good to go. That's close. Can't find it. Oh, over here. It'll be the last one you pick up. Pretty much. Of course, it will. If you pick another one, you find it. Well, that's true, too. And that, that's it right there, because it's taller than me. It was taller than me. <laughs> seven. So this, this other sling is going to be exactly opposite this. This has a lot of twists, so we'll take out. It's better not to be twisted. Um, one twist is okay, but we don't want a lot of them in there. So um, we're going to come around on this side now. Now, as I like to say, stones... Uh, actually, I'm going to hitch with the opposite. Stones don't really almost ever cartwheel. This is one of the few ex exceptions, actually. It's trying to, but it never made it all the way over. Conventional shaped monuments, especially with bases, um, oh, the front to back is how they fall generally, and that's where the danger is. Um, side to side, they rarely tip over side to side. They really have to be on a huge angle. So I'm just changing the hitch because the angle I'm coming from. Okay, so now I have two choke hitches that are equal and opposite. The most I've lifted with a tripod like this, of this height, is about 1,500 pounds. Um, I've made these as big as 18 feet tall, but then you get a lot of deflection when you lift something heavy. Deflection is when these bend. And with the 10-footers, they hardly bend at all. But when you get 16-footers, it'll just bend like a, like a rubber band. And so then the solution is you take like two by fours, or some type of wood and you screw it with construction screws you could actually tie it off too if you went you know if you had a bunch of rope okay a little more down here you keep it on the hoist you're standing there you got to learn how Direction. Don't go that way. Okay. Okay. So start to put it under pressure. I'm going to check the tripod again. Looks good. So you'll feel some tension. Um, when you start to lift, you go slow first. That's when there's going to be an issue. If you have really soft ground, the legs can start sinking in some situations. You're good. Just keep going. It'll start lifting. Don't stand over it because if something happens, it'll whiplash into you. Okay, hold on a second. We should probably try to dig, see if we can get it to drop in. I, I think we could just stand it up and it's right where it is. So let's just see. You can just sit like that. It's all good. So, um, so we'll just take this in a little. That's the bottom right there. I guess. Yeah. I guess. <coughs> I guess it doesn't really matter then. Just keep going. We'll see what happens. Oh, we can raise it. I'm just, there's no problem. It's not that heavy. Probably about 500 pounds. So the hoist affords a lot of reduction gearing. So I don't know if we have enough headroom to pull it. We probably, hopefully we do. Just keep going. So we only have this much room here. Yeah. I think we're good. We'll see. This might have broken. The bottom might not be flat. We'll find out in a second. Yeah, we, we should have enough room. Of course. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to come around and we're going to bury it up hard. You got, you got three inches. That's why you need tight hitches. And I could have made the tripod taller, but you can't move it now. You're fine. Just go higher. Oh, we're supposed to look up even at the bottom. So what we're going to do is um, now lower it down a little, but keep it under pressure so we can then have it supported partially by the ground. Down a little more. Yeah, that's good right there. You should just leave it right there. Okay, so we're going to dig it in deeper now, just with it sitting there like that. It's fine. And so we want to lower this in the ground a little more, and we need a better footprint for it. As somebody asked earlier about, um, you know, what'll keep it upright longer. Um, that's why we normally want to pack gravel around it. Um, but we want a, normally a mix of, 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 of coarse and fine aggregate. Ideally, crushed stone works well. Um, okay, I'm just trying to see what do they have here. It's all rock here. That's so. what we grow here. It's the nature of Morristown. Yeah, these 
rocks aren't bad, but they're all round, so they're not ideal. It's for what bubbles up. What Got it. It's the nature of it. It's probably these baskets. It's big. I don't know what that is, but... Oops. Yeah, there's a big something there's not any place in my garden. Maze or something? Chink. 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 Marble? No, it's concrete. Oh. But no, there's broken marble underground all the time. Yeah. All the footstones were removed in the whole cemetery. Oh, oh, okay. And I've also previous broken stones and whatnot. You want to shovel a little? Easier? Yeah, you can just run it right down the center. It's pretty loose to burn too. And the stone, yeah, just dig it out. The stone's leaning away, so it's not a, it's not a danger. So what we're going to do is just dig a hole now, get some of these rocks out of here, and then get a good depth, and then we'll put some gravel in, pack it down, and then bring the, the tablet back in the hole. Appreciate your help. Yeah, to move this, and you can see how much was in the ground now. Look at the the uh, moisture line, the dirt line. It was barely in the ground. On that side, it was like totally, just totally out, and then it went up. But um, actually, it'd be good to see what elevation we have to work with here now. It's not too bad, actually. So we want to bury it right about up to there. So it looks like um, we can measure and see about what depth we're going to be able to get here. I can get a tape measure out, but two, two foot is too much. So it's probably, probably we want to set it right about up to the bubble here. So um, about four inches shy of two feet. It's like the design is not quite, it should go deeper. It should have went up to here, but I don't want to cover the epitaph. So um, it's just, you know, they skimped a little. Bottom line is once it was in the ground, no one knew how much was underground. And that could account, probably definitely a contributory factor for it tipping over. So if it was four or six inches deeper underground, uh, it certainly may not have tipped as much. So it should be two feet underground? I didn't say that. I said it should be about a third of the stone, approximately as a general rule. And I didn't measure the stone, but I can just tell by looking at it, it's not quite enough. And that would also explain why it tipped over. Okay, we're looking pretty good. Let me see what we have here now. So, I want to bring over one of those things that grab them right there. Just put it right here on the edge. Thank you. So, um, I'm just trying to see. We were looking for about... Still not quite deeper. Oh my goodness. No, it's not. not and, that, and if this was a bigger tablet, you'd have... Like I said, I mean, you. a lot of time it's a two foot deep hole. I never go to the gym. I just go to the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about gym. Right. <laughs> Different kind of workout. All right, let me just. Uh, it's not going to want to sit here. Let's just go into the hole. See how. So you run the chain. You're doing a great job of it. Like I say, pull my chain. The chain, man. <laughs> chain game. You can step back so there's a little breathing room here. You don't have to just back a little more. You don't have to be crowded. Okay, so like I said before, we don't want to go out of the lifting plane, but we'll be okay here. Um, so just start to go down. Yeah, go to the other side of it. So I was going to move the whole setup, but probably not. What we'll do is we'll set it down, move the tripod, and then recenter it. Go all the way down. Another thing to keep in mind, we can always raise it, but we can never lower it without taking it out. So, um, height-wise, we're looking pretty good for the epitaph by the time we fill it in. It should drop on that side. Of it. All right, just um, go. We need slack. Okay, more slack. 
keep going. And then what I want you to do is come hold the stone. Just let go of the chain. And it's gonna, yeah, exactly. So it's free floating now. You've got, you're totally controlling it. So we're gonna move this whole setup now. Now we have enough, we just have the weight of the hoist now, which is about 30 pounds. So we do it incrementally. And we're gonna move it this way a little. And so just remember that, in fact, I'm going to detach this for a second, so you got the stone, just keep the stone tight. And um, wherever this hangs is where it wants to go, okay? So that this is going to help us, uh, it's going to act just like a plumb bob, which is a weight that's going to show you true vertical, you hang a weight on a string, so like an ancient tool. All right, so I can adjust this so it's going to align itself for the row. And um, probably wants to go this way a little bit more, well, I don't really know, so. Good. Also, if I want to bring this leg back, I can just do this and it'll come towards me. And the, high, the taller I go, the stronger and the more height. So then, okay, let me just check where that's hanging now. I think we're good to go. Looks pretty good. Pretty reasonable. Bring this in a little. Now I'll just sight the tripod. Make sure it's still pretty uh, symmetrical. It looks good. I'll bring this sling back up that dropped. I think we got a water by chance, a couple of them, maybe one for this gentleman too. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're getting them in. Okay, let me fix this. So we can go ahead and connect this one. Okay, so now it'll hold the stone. It shouldn't go anywhere now. Yep. And having that one swing on makes a little bit different. So now we'll go ahead and put this on. You're fine. Okay, you can swing. Connect those. And you can take over the chain since I've done this before. Now you're going to go make one of these. So just raise it back up. I'm going to try to dig this out a little more on the side plate. So just raise it up. A little, just a few inches. Good right there. Perfect. I'm just gonna take a scoop out of the side there. Seems like it should go a little deeper. I think the bottom is not flat. It seems like deeper on this side. Yeah. It's Thanks. typical for older stones to not be flat. Yeah. Let's try again. Go back down. Much better. Okay, just leave it right there. Go down a little more. Okay, hold on. Keep put it back up a little. Put it right there. Okay. Okay, looking good. Um, Angle-wise, looks like it should be. Generally, you average the rows, so you're going to come back as far as you can and try to sight it. So, far end looks like it should come back like this. How does that look from there? You're trying to average this with these other three stones. It's not going to be perfect. It looks pretty close. <laughs> it's hard to see yeah. with the slings on it. Maybe like that? Yeah, that's better. That is better. I know it's not much, but it's better. <laughs> like so, um, so, we're pretty close all around now. So we'll just go ahead and uh, just lower this off. And then we'll switch off. Uh, you can hold the stuff in there. Just put a hand on the stone. I'm just going to just double check and make sure These rows are not perfect. It's like it just twists a little, but it's very close. So we're going to take it off of this setup. So you're just going to hold it in. Okay, 
Edges are cut square, you could plumb it. It has to go that way, I knew that. And this one is cut square, but if it's a rough edge, then you have to run it along the inscription, okay? But on a lot of the older stones, you can plumb the edge. So we need to build up this side. You can just push that way a little bit. Okay, let's come back. Based on these, okay, let me just look at it. Good. Just see it because as soon as we fill it in, it's not moving. Okay, let's see if we can improve it at all. Um, yes, it looks like this bottom edge has to go back. I'll show you how we can do that easily with a bar. And this is also doubles as a branding iron when you leave it in the sun. <laughs> Use a little more and I'll bring the other end back a little. So I'm tr trying to average it in what's here. Could probably do this with a shovel so um, you could walk through and switch sides if you would. Thank you. So let me see if I can. Now yeah, I need the bar. It's a pretty big stone. Another way, if we if we if I rock it, just let go for a second. If I get it going like this, I can move it. That'll pack it also. So we're probably good about there. Now pick up the level. It's actually freestanding now. It's pretty much locked in. Let's see what we got here. So it needs this again. So um, probably easiest to come from that side and push from here. Doesn't need much. Let me get a shovel to a uh, bar to pack some in. So it needs like. You know, a half inch movement or something, so probably a little, yeah, a little more than that. Alright, that's probably good. So yeah, I'm sitting there thinking, have you ever been called in by somebody who's started to do a, a, this kind of repair Perfect. and got in over their head and you've had to bail them out? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, that's happened at workshops a bunch of times. <laughs> happened last year in Iowa. All right, I'm going to show you the easiest way to take down the tripod. So first we're going to take the single leg, come back. We need uh, soft ground for this. I'm hitting the stone full stuff right there. Um, and I get, this has got to dig in so it won't work on pavement. Then I'm going to come under this and then I can just take it off. It's about 30 pounds, so it's easier if your arm is Now to fold up the tripod, the simplest way is we just come like this and then I'm going to just put the single leg and it's just going to fold up to me like this. And then I can just get it out of the way. And looks like we did good now. It's just a matter of filling it in. It's self-supporting now. Um, it's plumb both ways. It looks really good. Thanks. So. We'll even out the gravel now, and, and, and Mother Nature's helping with the moving of uh, the sun <laughs> and the, this uh, nice trees here, deciduous trees. We're going to even out the gravel, and I'm going to put in a layer of this native material, and then probably a little more gravel. So put another bag in that wheelbarrow, we'll cap it with, and then we'll move to the soil.
So this stone was never broken. It just, just leaned, and so all we're doing is resetting a leaning tablet. So, um, and some of this kind of native sand and gravel, and we're going to kind of mix it. Do one more bag of gravel, and then we'll top it with some more soil. Some big boulders here. say that almost anybody could work on a small stone and if you start on little small stones like foot stones or child stones there's not any risk because they're not going to be that heavy so, um, so start, start small, small and work on. correct that's good advice yes okay I'm gonna push the gravel toward the stone and then start back filling behind it come around to the other side before I get too high. Bigger rocks we could put in if they're not too big and usually I keep them not against the stone itself. But um, they could go in the back part of the hole. So any other questions about this process? Thank you. Over there, there's one over there. Question. Thank you. Thank you. So tablet stones are just a lot of hard work. I mean, it's not, unless there's fractures or bad delamination, it's just, it's just like what you saw. It's just digging, lifting, you know, maneuvering, packing. That's all there is to it. It's just hard work.